Dale, I Rapstein, and here we are with your Spider ETF wrap up for Monday, the 10th of January, 2022. You know, today was the day where if you've taken my enhanced Bollinger Band course, it paid in spades. You, you hit home runs everywhere, but you've been doing that if you understand them. That is the key. That tells you where to come out if the market's going down or if the market's going up. What numbers should you be looking at? And the first challenge of it is key. I'll talk about that at the end of this. Another thing that I asked you is send me what markets you want me to cover because each week I'm going to take a lead market and break it apart and discover and go through the chart pattern with you. We have a new one this week. All you need to do is write me when you're on YouTube, put it in there. I make a list of them. I review them. And then I'll put them up. Last, I do ask that if you like these videos, at least give me the like on YouTube. It's free and it helps the algorithms help me. Okay, so as we take a look behind me, in the early morning at nine o'clock when I began recording my video, shortly thereafter, everything but silver was red. The whole market was down. As the day went on and in that video, just so you'll know, I was telling traders, I think today on the decline is come out of all shorts. And it's definitely, if you hit the Bollinger Band, you'll see in a moment here, paid in spades. We're gonna cover for this week, GBTC, which is the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. It's got good volume, it follows, I like how it follows uh, better Bitcoin than BTIO, the chart's cleaner looking. You've gone from $55 a share in November, and that's when you hit 70,000, in Bitcoin, you made a new low for the whole move today under 30, and in Bitcoin, you got under 40,000 today. So you've had a heck of a correction in these markets, approaching 40%, you know, it's a lot of pain. When you take a look at the trend, as measured by the swing line, you have a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. This is the most recent swing line high, and that's gonna be, what, 36.24. What is a swing line? A swing line looks from the current day at where the low or high or inside day or outside day pattern is in relation to the prior day. And from there, it draws this line for you. I teach you in my charting course how to do it, and it's a mainstay as far as I'm concerned of charting because anybody worth their salt, the one thing you're going to hear from them, hey, that market's making lower highs, lower lows, or it's making higher highs, higher lows, or it's not trending. It's got a higher high and a lower low, and it just keeps whipping back and forth. Real important. The next thing I look for is bias. Bias to me is determined by price and its relationship to the 18-day average of closes. If the market's under it, the bias is down. So the filter is if I have a trend down with lower highs, lower and lows, and the bias is down, I have reasons to be looking very hard at being short that market. The next thing I look at are the Bollinger Bands, the black lines. And the reason I do that is what? 95% of the time, the markets are going to look at that band and they're going to treat it if you break to it as support, if you rally to it, resistance. Now, you'll say eventually it's going to drive the market up and it will. It'll hit it. It'll back off. It lets you in to keep coming against it or a window envelope. I don't show you the window envelopes here and I'm not going to. That is all done. There's, there's two more moving averages and a set of window envelopes that I include in my morning subscriber videos in both the futures and the ETF section. That's where they'll stay, not here. Suffice to say, here's the market last uh, Monday. Here's the market coming down Tuesday, Wednesday. You get to the lower Bollinger Band on January 5th. You've pushed it a bit further, but so what? The first time you hit it, the first time you hit it was where you have to take off something if you're short. Now, it depends how much is something if you're embedded or not. When you're not embedded, I tell my traders that something is everything. I don't care about the rest of the trade. Why? The filet was in here. The rest of it, what do I say? The, the, the different trimmings, is that a good word? Apple peaked out on an uptrend right up to these highs. We talked about it here, 
right as it was occurring. I said, that's where I think, just like I just showed you coming out of shorts, that was where the filet was come out, and now the market did this. What did it do today? Today it told anyone if they were short. My work was not. Remember I told you, my work's not always in a position. I'm sure there were traders that have some type of system they, they like that covers that. But when you hit 168.18 today under the 168.52, I think the pros were covering shorts. And from there it rallied up on the close almost $4. In XLF, again, you have a market that's embedded. When you have an embedded market and the trend is up, you're looking to come in on the brakes to get out again at the Bollinger Band. Now, you also had today an outside day down. So there's a warning sign to you right now that this market's getting a little bit overdone, but I don't think it'll stop the longs from wanting to buy this market on a further break tomorrow. They'll come out, in my opinion, if the red line in the last two minutes of trade is under 79 in the slow stochastic. In Disney, the short-term trend is down. You have lower highs, lower lows, but the bias is up. You're over the 18-day average. The two negate each other. There's nothing to do on the chart. In meta platforms, the bear sign has been here for a while. It didn't just begin. You had it lower highs, lower lows. Now you're looking for a settlement underneath the 18-day average. You immediately go to the Bollinger Band. That's a cover all short. The market gives you a bounce back to the resistance. Some traders might have gone short there. I would have not. I would have been on the ropes. Any numbers that are over 30s, you're not oversold anymore. So to go short there would not have been a bothersome number. But where does the stop have to be? Right over the high here where you see that arrow. And if it breaks again, you're looking for what? You're looking for the Bollinger Band again to again cover all shorts and begin the pattern. That's why today was a great day, I keep saying it. In XLI, the trend is down, but all you're doing is falling back to the 18-day average and the bias is up. Again, no trend. Take a look here, you had an embedded reading, you lose it on the close today, and the goal when you lose it is the 18-day average of closes, you went right to it on the same day, so there's no play to be made off of that. In XSD, let's take a look. Here's the market coming down. I'm the first to tell you my type of technique would not have had this short. It wouldn't have been long for sure. But if it keeps dropping, I'll be looking for the potential of the Bollinger Band to come out. And I'm paying attention to the 100-day. It might come in eventually and support that. This is how the market looked on Friday. You tell me today what that market did. Again, that's what my enhanced course teaches. You're not embedded. You hit those, you're completely out of the market if you follow my technique. And XHB, it's the same thing. You've been in a downtrend. Let me just show you. This one is a downtrend, clear cut. Let me get right here. Lower highs, lower lows, right? So if you're short this market, your stop is over this high, the target is the lower Bollinger Band, you're not embedded, I'd be telling you to come out of your whole trade. The market on Friday goes to that. Today it comes down a bit more, and then the two combinations hold. I'm not looking for a bottom here. I'm looking, is this market a short sale again at 83.16, as long as the numbers, if it gets up there, are above 30 in both parts of the slow stochastic. In the energy sector, now nah, you're not going to get me to ever tell you to buy after four days in a row over a Bollinger Band, even though you're embedded. On a bigger break, I'm interested. You get the market down into these zones here. I'll be very, very interested. And I did put out trade recommendations based on that in my futures part of the market. In the gold market, this was a cover all short. You tell me when. Friday. Lower highs, lower lows, market Closed under the 18-day average, trend down, bias down, target potential, lower Bollinger Band. There might be some window envelopes in there. Kaboom! And thank you so much. You went to 29.62, 29.65 was the Bollinger Band, and here you're back at 30.01. I'm happy. That's not a go long. It's a be out of short number now. And no, you're not looking to be short. It's oversold. GDX acting much stronger than gold. Market refuses to break down here. The trend is still down. Are the pros short at 168.39? They could be. Their stops 
probably 170, 94, and they're looking to eke out wherever the Bollinger Band comes in, in my opinion. In the XME, this has been one of my favorites to be long, not anymore. You know, you lost the trend, you lost the embedded reading. You can see that Well, you hit the upper Bollinger Band and then you lose this reading. The odds favor you're going to make a run now to that 18-day average. Certainly didn't do it today, but it could. I want no part of that right now. The trend is up. You're correcting an overbought situation and the bias is up. I do like the setup though, the 18 over the 100 day, the 100 over the 200. I think that's still a very powerful bullish setup. Copper market refuses to dive down and get under that 100 day average. It has plenty going against it right now. It has the situation of Omicron around the world and especially in China who consumes 50% of the world's copper they're closing down different cities. Uh, it's just spreading and their policy is zero, zero tolerance. So families let one person out every three days to go get groceries and everybody stays in their apartments till the uh, vex, till what, I, what do I want to say? Till they believe that the natural vaccination process takes place. That could be a week, two weeks, whatever they decide it's going to be. But that hurts production. Then you have the Chinese New Year right around the corner. So I don't think copper is going to get an awful lot of bullish news right here. I think it'll come under more pressure, but I do not think it'll turn into a bear market of any meaning. TLT, the top is in place, as I said over the weekend. I think that's your major top now. Hard rallies, I think they'll get sold. The question is where you're embedded, and that's all I'm saying is where. I think that given a rally, I'll be telling my subscribers to go short. And on FXE, you are caught day in and day out at this 18-day average. There's just no play in that market at this point. Now, you might want to take a look and learn more about those enhanced Bollinger Bands, as I call them. Take a look at this. Welcome. I'm Ira Epstein, and I'm here to talk about my enhanced Bollinger Band course. Now, many of you have taken my regular charting course, and if not, you might think you know something about Bollinger Bands. As you know, Bollinger Bands are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95% of the time. And on a chart, it will offer on the top part resistance, on the bottom support, and the ideas the market will travel within them. We know that sometimes it latches onto that band, goes up or goes down. Well, how do you play with that? Can you pyramid the positions off that type of thinking? Well, I've applied all three of these into 13 different videos that teach you my concept of it. And from that concept, you're able to work with weekly charts and or daily charts. The 13 videos, each about seven minutes long. The idea here is not to put you in school forever, but to teach. Now, if you haven't tried my complete futures research, I throw that in as well. Whether you've tried this or not, I think it's worth taking a look at. I think you're going to learn something from there. That research, by the way, covers twice daily market updates for you and access to what I call window envelope numbers, which I think are very important when looking at these Bollinger Bands. The next part is a trial to our charting software so you can make your charts look the same way that mine do. It's that simple. Where do you go with it and how do you get all this? It's simple. You go to our website, www.iraepstein.com. If you go to the word education, everything you need is answered there. You can also call my staff. They'll be happy to help you get set up. I'm Ira Epstein on the road to your education.